Hey, what's up? This is Kevin from Kevin's Barbecue Joints, and I have a really good one for you. This is a how-to video, how to sharpen knives, with Brad Robinson from Chud's Barbecue. He also works at Leroy and Lewis in Austin, Texas. He loves knives. He loves sharpening. So we go over all the different ways to sharpen knives, from honing tools to whetstones to a belt sander. He gives examples. He shows how to use the tools, as well as he goes over all the different knives that he uses and how to sharpen them. And along the way, he gives tons of tips and tricks. This one is truly spectacular. If you have a good set of knives or you're going to get a good set of knives, this is perfect for you because it shows you how to take care of them. He also shows how to, if the tip breaks off your knife, how to fix that. And he fixes it for us on the video. It's fantastic. I can't thank him enough for taking the time. I know this is going to be very informative for a lot of people. And the show is brought to you by Centex Smokers. They're out of Luling, Texas. Centex underscore smokers on Instagram offset pits and as well as other types of pits check them out four to five month lead time as well as tree oak distilling they're out of dripping springs texas that's treatyoakdistilling.com they have a physical location too check them out they have a barbecue joint on site again that's treaty oak distilling the reason why i did this video was because i have a website at kevinsbbqjoints.com and i did three separate pieces one piece on knives of barbecue joints to use and i have over 160 barbecue joints that have responded in their words as to what knives they use as well as a piece on sharpeners and honing tools with over 140 barbecue joints that have responded and that's the impetus for this video here and then i have another one on cutting boards and blocks that barbecue joints use. So you can check all that out at kevinsbbqjoints.com. But thank you so much. I know this is gonna be informative. And also in the notes below, as well as a companion blog, I will have all of the items that Brad uses and all the items that he refers to, links to all them below. So that way you can get them yourselves and check them out and see what, what he's referring to. Have a great day. Enjoy this. All right. Good afternoon, Brad. How are you? I'm doing well, Kevin. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm glad you decided to join me on this inaugural uh demonstration of tools because I thought that would be fun. I've like, I reached out to you guys at Leroy and Lewis and a bunch of different people asking what they use for sharpeners, for knives and for cutting boards. And your response, I had heard back from, uh, I think it was from Sawyer that you use a belt sander for, for uh, sharpening. And so that got me thinking, Hey, you know, it'd be fun. And I know that you know how to use a whetstone and honing tool. Like, so I figured let's uh, let's talk about what tools you use for sharpening and then maybe kind of go over your knives as well. Would that be uh, cool? Surely, surely. Yeah, sounds fun. Yeah, the belt sander is uh, a nice little life hack. It makes life a lot easier, especially if you're, you know, using knives all day, every day, like I have been for the last few years. But it came about because I wanted to start making knives as another little side hobby a couple <laughs> of years back. So I bought this cheap little belt sander from Harbor Freight. It was like 50 or 60 bucks. And uh, I actually made this knife right here this Did little you? guy oh that's not cool. very not very pretty it's a carbon steel knife so it's not it's uh kind of stained up but yeah it's nice and sharp just bought some tool grade steel and it's the only one i made so that hobby lasted for about five minutes <laughs> do you think you'll get back into knife making someday as another like as a hobby no yeah well, i'd love to get back into it but you know i'm a little a little booked with hobbies at the moment so <laughs> yeah, yeah. you've got hobbies upon hobbies why don't we why don't we for the people that aren't that don't know about chud's barbecue tell, let's talk about what you do and then also what you do with Leroy and lewis because you, you guys all do some cool stuff yeah yeah so i'm uh, i work at Leroy and lewis currently and i've been there for almost four years now and I do most of the butchery there, a lot of the prep work, kind of behind the scenes, breaking down the pigs, trimming briskets, that kind of stuff. A lot of knife work, which is uh, what brings us to here today. But on the side of that, I also build, build smokers and tortilla presses and that kind of stuff on the side. And I have a YouTube channel where I do a lot of backyard cooking and teaching everything I know. And, and what, is, what is that YouTube channel called? Just type in Chud's BBQ on YouTube. Go to chudsbarbecue.com. That'll take you there. And just there's not too many chuds in the world so i'm pretty easy to find <laughs> and it's not it's not 3ds right it's 1d 1d yeah a lot of people think it's 2ds so maybe i'll change it i don't know <laughs> and i'll put information about all that and i'll also put because and we and i'll put a link to our previous interview because we talked all about your backstory and where you're from and so if people want to need to know that but let's talk about sharpening and sharpening tools what would you recommend like for for daily use and then for like weekly or monthly sharpening uh first and foremost if you have a good knife or something that you know doesn't just clank around in a kitchen drawer all the time i'd recommend a knife block or a nice magnet on the wall that way keep the edge on there but the first thing everyone should get is a honing rod all right which cool. is this guy right this is this guy right here and this is 
not sharpening your your knife at all. It's not taking any metal off or recreating the edge. It's just going to help straighten it back out between uses. Or if you know if you're if you're using a knife all day every day, you can use it periodically. But if it's ever feeling dull, this is just a great way to touch it up, kind of reform that microscopic edge on the blade. General maintenance. This is this is what you need to have. These are pretty cheap too. You can pick them up at you know Be Smart or Restaurant Depot. Get them online. That kind of thing. So wait, what brand is that? Is that a Dexter one or a? This is a Shun one that oh, I Shun. got, which oh. is because I have a few different Shun knives, and they're it's nice because this one has a little angle right there on the on the hilt okay. that shows you the exact angle that you're supposed to sharpen your knife at. Oh. Because Shuns have a pretty steep angle compared to a lot of. Uh, uh, western style knives so that one's pretty nice but yeah is, I mean, is any... that the case for all honing tools do they all have that that little guide or is that something that just was shun it's just with shun yeah <laughs> of course but, uh, i thought i thought that was pretty cool that's right because fall at until you get to get the right angle kind of memorized and then you can just get quicker with it now one thing but one thing that i did I, I reached out to dr jeff Savel over at texas a&m to ask him about sharpening and honing tools and he one thing that he mentioned and i think it's important that people know don't sharp don't hone your knife over like, around your meat products around your your food because the little 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 shards can go into your food right yeah yeah definitely that's definitely uh, a very nitpicky piece of advice but it makes complete sense because <laughs> i mean yeah anytime you're running a knife on there you're going to be taking off i mean like i said you're not taking off microscopic you're not re- but... resharpening the blade but like on a very tiny level for yeah it's, that's definitely a good hygienic tip just to <laughs> and also afterwards if, even after like you're sharpening or anything, you want to give it a nice little wipe down just in okay. case there's any any little shards or anything on there. Like a lot of people said, I use a ceramic. What do you know anything about the difference of those? Yeah, there's, there's a few different ones. Most of them are just made out of a hardened steel that's yeah. going to be a little harder than your knife. But they also make ceramic ones. They make diamond ones that have like microscopic yeah, I've seen people chunks say that. of diamond in there. Those are kind of cool. They're they're really painful to use. It's kind of like like it's it hurts your teeth in a weird way you know what i mean it's like <laughs> oh does it make a weird noise just, yeah well it's just grind it's like it's really <laughs> gritty and it's just like Ew. i don't know not for me so that's your one of choice do you have that in your your role is that do you bring that with you to Leroy and lewis or is that just for at home or yeah we've got a ton of these one around okay. they you wear through them after a while because they have these tiny little uh little not serrations but these little grooves on them and that's kind of what catches the knife and after a while they'll go dull so I've got one that I keep on my little workstation out here, and I've got one that I keep at work that we all kind of use just to make sure everything stays in tip-top shape. <laughs> Excellent. Well, there's there's that. And, that. and a lot of home cooks would probably get something like that too. I think that I actually have one, so it's not like – I don't have any – the next things we're going to talk about I don't personally own. So that's that's another reason why I wanted to reach out. What, what's the next step up? Like if you're If you're just a home cook, like – Having one of these will keep your knife sharper for longer, and then maybe every six months, every year, maybe you can get it professionally sharpened. Mm-hmm. So that that would be like level one knife care, I would okay, say. Cool. Just get one of these every now and then, touch it up, and then get it professionally sharpened if you don't have what we're about to talk about. The next step up would be to get a whetstone, and that's what I've got here. I've had this soaking for the last half hour or so, and this is this is a pretty common one. This is a real simple one. Yeah, well, can you explain the six? Because a lot of people, when they wrote back to me, said 6,000, 3,000, 1,000. What, so what is that all? Yeah, like, I'm sure you're going to explain that, but let's jump into it. Yeah, it's all about just the coarseness of, of the stone. Because now, instead of honing, where we're just kind of aligning the edge, we're actually going to be reforming the edge and actually taking steel off and sharpening. So just like anything else, like woodworking or anything, you want to start really coarse, which is going to remove a lot of steel, okay. and then gradually get finer and finer, which will just basically polish it up, and you can get it to a nice mirror finish. So you can go crazy with it if you want. Like some some of the real knife sharpening nerds will start at like six or start at like one thousand, then go up to five thousand, six thousand, up to ten thousand. And at that point you're you're just mirror finish. So so the one thousand is more coarse. This is good. The one thousand is more coarse and then as it gets higher it's more fine, right? Is that right? Yeah. But this is what I would recommend for most people. This is gonna get you in the ballpark of what you need. Perfect. Start with the one thousand, get your get your shape in there, and then the six thousand will really polish it. And then you can finish it on the honing rod. Oh. And uh and that will 
get you to a really nice workable knife. Nice. Could you give us a little example of uh, what it, what it's like to use a whetstone? Yeah. So for uh, let's see, which one am I going to sharpen here? This one needs some work. I use this one a lot. This is a Wustoff eight inch chest knife. Perfect. This thing is a workhorse. Use it all the time. But basically, yeah, like I said, I had this soaking for a good. 30 45 minutes okay. just to make it a little just to you know uh, have the that's why it's a whetstone it's got to absorb some water to be functional perfect okay. and then you're basically just running the length of your blade over the stone and this is a, the why it's tricky for some people because the angle is really all up to you there's no there's nothing like set in stone so to speak that's going to help you guide okay but a lot of people say you just kind of put your knife down and go about the width of a matchbook or, you know, a stack of pennies, three pennies high, and that's a good place to be. Okay. And then you just want to kind of get your muscle memory down to the proper angle and stick with it. And then it's just like that. I like to do about five, five, ten on one side. Okay. Flip it over. And then five on the other side and it's all about just long even strokes <laughs> and uh just keeping everything as uniform as possible make sure you're getting the whole blade and you don't ever want to wash this off like you can see it's starting to get a little dirty which uh -huh. is some of the steel coming off and that's actually going to help with the sharpening process so just so soaking so soaking so, is all you do yep just soak it in water and then you just kind of go for it just and you can start looking yeah, at it do you notice it you, already yeah you can look at it see the angle if you're really new to it or if you have a super dull knife some people say you can draw a line on the edge with sharpie and that way you can kind of see what you're taking oh. off because oh. it's a good little tip for beginners and if that so if that sharpie line is gone you know that you've like, sharpened it proper yeah so then you can kind of see how much you're taking off one side make sure you're getting evenly and after doing this for a good bit you'll you can start to feel it oh, a bit of a burr starting to form oh okay which means which is kind of like a microscopic little very pointy tip that's going to kind of fold back and forth on one side to the other which we'll then be removing on the next stone okay and that's also do most people use like a little rag or something to hold it in place yeah, this one came with a little wood holder. It's got a rubber bottom on it. Oh, okay. Holds it nicely. But but just because it's wet, I usually put it on a rag just to make sure it, it doesn't move around too much. But, yep, just going at it. And you can start to feel that blade. It starts to catch that fingernail test, you know, starts to catch that looking good. I can see the burr. You can't see it on camera, obviously. No, no, but if you could, if you look at it real look at it real closely you can kind of if i flick my nail i can feel it catching on there okay which means i know i'm in the in the right place so are there certain knives that you <laughs> wouldn't want to use a whetstone for uh not really okay. uh, i mean serrated knives you know you yeah, would really want to yeah, use on that yeah, for sure <laughs> but yeah again this is just for a serrated knife too you wouldn't use that uh honing rod no, I mean, honestly, that's why most people tend to stick with like the Dexter Russell bread knife because, you know, if you get a lot of use out of them and once they're done, you just kind of have yeah, to replace it. Yeah, it's very well priced and you can just, yeah, get through them. Now with, what's, can you tell really quick, it's going to be jumping around a second, and for the difference between scalloped and serrated knife? Yeah, let me see if I go in here. This is, uh, this is a scalloped one where instead of just being just just all these serrations on top it's got these little dimples in yeah, you between can see that. yeah yeah which means instead of just being like a saw with teeth it's actually sharp in between the in between the teeth and uh yeah it works really well like like on this one on this side it's not scalloped gotcha so it looks just like that but on this side it's scalloped right in there and it just helps keep it sharper yeah move that so nice that, those are your guys knives too huh yeah, that's a little Roy and Lewis bread knife. We sell these on the website. Yeah, yeah, those are really nice. And I, uh, you guys uh, use those for cutting brisket, right? Yeah, brisket, beef cheeks. Oh, it really, uh, especially with uh, with how we cook our briskets and stuff. They've got a really crunchy bark on them and a really soft interior. 
much like a loaf of bread, right? You know, mm-hmm. it's got a crust and then really soft. So bread knives just make sense for that kind of stuff. So this knife is really good. I did a few different, a few passes on each side. I can see the blade looking really nice. And now we're going to flip it over to the 6,000 side. And this is just going to polish it up. And I'm not sure how good the audio is, but this side is a lot quieter. It is quieter. And that, and that's just because it's, it's more polishing as opposed to like actually removing steel. Yeah, I'll, I'll actually I'll mention in the intro to listen to it because you can't tell the difference for sure. This side feels a lot better too. It's very pleasant. Yeah, but this think... same deal, same angle, flip back and forth, even su- same amount of strokes on each side, and yeah, that's feeling way sharper already. I could t- we could turn this into one of those ASMR videos where they people <laughs> just listen to. Because I, I don't know if that's a correct <laughs> acronym, but I think it's <laughs> knife sharpening just. Stay calm. Stay yeah, calm. I'm, have you heard about Kevin's new ASMR channel? <laughs> the only one I don't like is when he does the chalkboard. That one's awful. <laughs> <laughs> do like all things that people hate. Do like do the complete opposite of what you're. But yeah, as you can see, this was white when we started. Now there's all that on there. That's just some some steel coming off, and that's means you know it's working. And this is, is there from, a reason why you would want to pol- the polish it? Is polishing those burnt like is it? It's finishing off what you had done on the other side. Yeah, it's like if you ever sanded a piece of wood, you know, you go from, you know, you go from really coarse up to really fine, just so because it, uh, and that's how you get a really nice smooth mm-hmm. finish on there. It's going to help that blade get really sharp, and that's feeling really nice already. And like I said, you can go all the way until you get like a mirror finish on these. But for what you use it, what you utilize it for, that's perfect. That's that's about as far as you would yeah, want to go. Yeah, this is it. And we can and we'll talk a little bit too about our next step once we bust out the the old uh, belt sander. But that's feeling really sharp. So what do you use your your chef's knife for? This is great for everything, man. Like all the veg prep. Every time we make coleslaw, we'll use this. Breaking down chickens. You know, you want something with a little bit more heft to it as opposed to you know, like, a, like a boning knife or something. But yeah, this is a great utility knife. Pretty much good for everything. Now I'm just going to hit... Eight, eight as opposed to six inches. Is there a certain preference that you have? Yeah, eight inches is pretty, pretty standard across the board. For I mean, this is just like the knife. If you're going to get one knife, this is the one because it's pretty much good at everything. And then I have a six inch that I use as well, but... I don't know. It doesn't. I just. I'm just so used to holding these, yeah. and the, you got so much control with with this side that this is this size. Doesn't, I'd recommend it. I have a six inch. I like to use a six inch for ribs, and that's just because with ribs you're cutting through a lot of cartilage and stuff. So that's kind of one that I don't need to keep as sharp. But just like anything else, a lot of people think like, "Oh, why do you have so many knives?" And it's like because. You know, use these all the time, and the more you have, the less you're going to use one, right? Mm-hmm. If I use this for everything, in every video, every every day at work, this thing would be beat up, and I'd have to sharpen it all the time. But this is feeling pretty sharp. Is there a, is there a, a test that you can pass? The old oh, yep, the old paper test. Yep, works oh, for me. Perfect. Wow. Thank you. And yeah, Brad. it doesn't take too That's long. Right. Right there, like if I think that that in itself is a great lesson for people because it's one thing to tell people what you use, it's another to show them. Right, right, and uh, yeah, I mean, again, I'll I'll do this every every couple months because you know these knives get a lot of use, but you can tell too because once you start using a dull knife, it's like cutting an onion or something. We cut a lot of onions out of Emma, so I'll notice immediately if I'm using a dull knife. So something to get good at and it's kind of fun once you get into it you know just trying to find the right angle seeing how perfectly sharp Mm -hmm. you can get a blade and these are tools of your craft so it's nice to have tools that work properly and function the way you want them to exactly but yeah especially if you're going to spend like this is like a 120 dollar knife you know what i mean so if you're going to invest in some quality tools you really want to know how to take care of them when you get your knife is it sharp the way you want it or do you jump and do this process right when you get when you buy a knife uh typically knives come really sharp right out of the box okay so i don't i don't i don't usually sharpen them unless it's like 
you know, like a weird, I get it all, like at a thrift store or something <laughs> like that. But uh, yeah, yeah, the, like Wustoff and Shun and Dexter, they always ship their knives really sharp. And as you can see, the blade there has got a yeah. nice, po- nice polish on it. Yeah, nice you can definitely clean. see it. That's cool. And, it's, and if you have any damaged knives too, like uh, like this one, this one has gotten a lot of use. I'm not sure if you can see that on the camera, but mm-hmm. it's got a lot of little little tiny nicks in there. Oh, for sure, I lost yeah. the tip uh-huh. on this one. Oh, Don't look at lend that. Cole Parkman your knives. Tell you what. Oh, is that Cole? <laughs> Cole did that? No, no, I'm just I'm just making fun of him. <laughs> I'm just but uh, yeah, so that's something else you can fix with uh, with a whetstone. If you stick on the on the really coarse side, you can really like get in there and form a new edge. Because you know it's just metal after all. It's everything's everything's fixable. What type of knife is that? Which one is that? That's uh, is that a Wustoff too or is that a Shun? This is a Shun. Yeah, this okay. is a Kiritsuke. It has those waves in the metal itself. Is that because they're folding the metal? Or... Yeah, it's uh, kind of like Damascus, where they fold metal over and over. Different types of metal that have different uh, different mm-hmm. steel patterns to them. I love that. Mostly for aesthetic, but also for strength. You know, I forget how many layers they put into a blade like this, but. It's a lot. What's the most you would spend on a knife? Oh, man, I'm kind of a knife nerd, so how much have I spent? The most expensive knife I have is probably this one right here. This is like 220 bucks or something. This is the, the Shun Premier bread knife. I actually got this one as a gift. Wow. But That's nice. This is this is definitely a splurge knife. You can see it's got nice like dimpling on there. Yeah, but that's, at, that's again, you can sharpen it. So I save this one for the real delicate meats. But yeah, most knives are in the hundred dollar range. Are really gonna gonna do you well. This is probably my favorite knife at the moment. This is a Masono. This is a uh, it's about an eighty dollar knife. Got it on Amazon, and it's just a classic Gyo two style, but very sharp. Looks really it's looks super sharp. That looks. <laughs> and yeah, I love this thing. Great knife. Highly recommend it. Probably should. Is that a is that six inches or eight inches? Six inches, right? Uh, this is, yeah, yeah it's, this hard, six it's, inch. it's hard to tell with your <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah, that looks like six. That's a killer knife. But, yeah, this is a great knife. Highly recommend it. What do you use that one for? This one I used mostly for more delicate stuff. It's a pretty thin knife, so it's really great for vegetables. Like, we cut a lot of jalapenos after we smoke them, and they're pretty rubbery after you smoke mm-hmm. them. So you really need a sharp knife to get through them, so I used a lot for that. Dicing onions. It's pretty much uh, the same use as a chef's knife, but mm-hmm. where this one is a Wustoff is very thick, very heavy. This one's a little more delicate, kind of like a Shun. But uh, yeah, I'm always trying out new knives, see what I like best. But this has been this has been my favorite as of late. Also, it's really lightweight. So is that good? Is that good? Do you like it lightweight, or is it better if it's a little heavier for balance? Uh, it depends. That's why I have uh, two. Yeah, these, yeah. Two, I guess you have two uh, options, this, right? Yeah, this one's heavy, which is great for like breaking through bones or like cutting up like sweet potatoes or anything that's really hard. Mm-hmm. And then this one's better for light duty stuff, cutting up, cut, do all of our coleslaw, cut up our kale with this this guy. Cool. And I'll put I'll put but, links to all the different knives that you mentioned and, and all the different tools below. So that and I'll do a companion blog piece so people can see because I think that would be you know I'm sure people are gonna wanna not necessarily copy you but uh, use you as inspiration. Yeah, right. I mean, hey, I hold knives for like 80 hours a week, so might as well. I've I've got some I've got some input. <laughs> <laughs> After you sharpen your knife, are is it more apt to cutting yourself? Like I get to be extra careful after you sharpen or just or just be extra careful with knives in general yeah i definitely want to be careful all the time if you're used to a dull knife then using a sharp knife you you may be more apt to cut yourself because you're not as wary of how sharp the blade is but typically generally speaking you're more likely to hurt yourself with a dull knife because if you go to cut into like an apple or a potato or something and it doesn't bite it Mm -hmm. doesn't like sink in immediately it tends to it'll roll you know what I mean? And it'll oh, kind of slide. Mm-hmm. It'll deflect and go right into your hand. Ask me how I know. So, yeah, keeping a sharp <laughs> knife is definitely a, definitely good practice. Excellent. Well, that's cool. Well, let's, let's move on to the next. Uh, so, so, so when you talk about the belt, uh, belt sander, what, what, are you, <laughs> what are you sharpening with your belt sander? Well, like I said, I got the belt sander for making knives. And then as I was making them, you know, I had to sharpen it. So I got all these different belts. And these are little... Uh, these are, this is just a little, yeah, this is a little one inch belt sander, super, super cheap. It's like 50 bucks or something like that. 
and it just has these belts that they come in all the different grits, right? So you can go anywhere from like 80 grit or really, really, really rough all the way up to super fine. So it's just like a whetstone in that you can just swap out the belts oh, cool. and move your way up until you have a polished finish. So these are the three that I tend to use. This one, I believe, is a 600. Then go up to go up to this one, which is a 400, which is a little bit more kind of like the kind of like the whetstones this one's a lot finer and then this is the real winner right here this is a leather strop belt huh. and this is what really helps you get your razor finish on all knives you know you think about the barber pulling out the big leather strop for his straight edge i love that it's the same same exact thing and that is uh the real nerdy way to get a super sharp knife. If you have just a piece of leather, like an old belt would probably do just fine, but like it's going to, it does the same thing as the honing rod, okay. but just on a much finer level. And especially because this one's on a belt sander, it's spinning and it, it really makes a much bigger difference than I ever would have guessed. So did that come with it or did you buy that separate? Yeah, I bought this separate. I got all these belts I got on Amazon, Okay. but uh, yeah, this is uh Pretty sim simple, as you'd imagine. Just turns on, start spinning, <laughs> and then grab your knife and same deal. Find your angle. Cut the even passage. And you try to do it. And the beauty of this is that. But because it's spinning and moving so much faster, you're going to be much more efficient than the whetstone. But at the same time, you're a lot more likely to mess up, right? If you don't, if you mess up your angle on a whetstone, you're moving slowly. But on this, if you like round it, you'll lose your edge immediately. So there's that. But this is a uh, great for fixing chip knives, which is what I'll do today. I'll put a new tip on this thing, right? Okay. Because this one, the tip is off of there. So on a whetstone, you'd really have to yeah, get it'll in take there. Yeah, on this. Two weeks. Yeah, right? So this one. Okay. Oh, look at that. Yeah, because I'm sure a lot of people have that issue. They'll tip to break off, but they probably have just given up or gotten a new knife. Oh, Look at that. I am thoroughly impressed, Brad. This is a I usually say this. Use a belt sander for a lot of these cheaper knives. Like this is my go-to boning knife. This is a Victorinox. I like the red-handled ones, and this is just a six-inch boning knife. And the, again, these are like fifteen bucks. So a lot of times people will just toss them out and get a new one when they go dull. But for a knife that gets as much abuse as this one, mm -hmm. just getting a quick sharpen on this works great. Oh, that's perfect. So yeah, so this one pretty dull. If you mess up on a bony knife like this, then you can easily just replace it. It's not the end of the world, so might as well give it a shot. This is cool. You can see the, the birds passing back and forth on it. Like, if you look, ah, exactly, you'll be able to see, but it's got this. And then, the only problem with the belt standing is that the knife's going to get pretty hot. Yeah. 
Yeah, there's a lot of friction going on. As yeah, belts just come right off. Now we'll swap out for the next tier, the more fine version, which will kind of you know start the polishing process, just like the last, just like the wet stone there. And this just slides on. Yeah, exactly. Once you see the burr on there, you know you're. you're it kind of starts passing back and forth depending on which side you're going to. That's how you know you've got to a really nice point. You have that nice bead on there. So now I'm going to fire this back up. We'll take off this uh, this burr, get it a little bit sharper, and then we'll pop on the honing wheel and have a sharp knife. Looking good already. So then we'll just, uh, one more, we'll put this leather one on there, this thing. I am buying one of those today online. <laughs> That's so cool. It's a fun, like, is there anything else you could use it for other, other than knives? Pretty much anything, I suppose. Yeah, if you have, like, a little piece of wood that you just need to round off. Yeah, yeah. But it does have this, uh, it does have, they do make angle uh, attachments for this too. I had one, I lost it, but like it's specifically meant for, it attaches to this plate right here. So you can actually control the angle oh. perfectly. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of going at it freehand here, but yeah, it's nice if you have one of those, you can say you've got your angle locked in and it makes the whole process great, especially if you're, you're new to the game. So this is the leather one, right? Yeah, this is the leather one. This is just gonna polish it right on up. Are you putting a lot of pressure on it, or are you being pretty gentle with it? That's a good question. I not on not on this one. I don't put too much pressure. Just just enough to make sure we're getting some good contact on the whetstone, though. You're, you want to put about, you know, between four and eight pounds of pressure. Mm -hmm. So if you've never done it before, you can put it on like a scale and push down and kind of get a feel for well, that's a good how idea. much pressure. Be, because you need to have enough force on there to actually get it to work right, as opposed to like something like the honing rod where you're just, you're just kind of realigning mm -hmm. it. You're, you're not trying to remove any steel with this, but on that one, you really, you are. So you really need to have it, the right amount of pressure on there. But yeah, this is feeling nice and sharp. Clean it off a little bit. Do the old paper cuts down and see if it cuts. Sharp, sharp enough for me. <laughs> nice. Can you cut a tin can and then a tomato? <laughs> I can cut a penny in half with this with this knife. And yeah, that's nice and sharp on there. Okay. Oh, well, that's so yeah, much yeah. different. A huge difference. Yeah. Wow. Nice and clean too. They also make some uh, some compounds. I don't know what they call it, but it's like a little uh, some sort of compound that you can put on this, which will make it work even better. Oh, okay. It's like a, it's like, like, a like a wax. Okay, I'll do some research on that. That's. Have you ever used the ones that are the the, the sharpening that like a little box looks like a box with a couple little slats that you. Have you ever used those before? Yeah, those are definitely not ideal. They, you can't really control the angle too much. They kind of tend to chew up your knife a bit. I mean, if you are like, if you don't care, you know, if you're like at an Airbnb or something and they've got one of those, go for it. But <laughs> that was a scary if you, yeah. if, Like if you care, yeah, if you, I mean, in a pinch, they'll work. If Like for these, yeah, keep one of those around, sure. Because, you know, it'll, it'll, it's a temporary fix, mm -hmm. but. If you if you care at all about your if you're watching this video then you probably should chances are you don't, yeah chances are you wouldn't be. <laughs> yeah yeah nice yeah it's crazy how much of a difference this leather strop makes like any most of the time like I was saying like all you really need is one of these mm -hmm. 
just to kind of retouch and tune up your knife. But if you have one of these around or just a piece of leather, like it'll really, really make a difference. How often do you use that? About the same as the wet stone? Yeah, honestly, I usually just reach for this. Okay. It's so much quicker. I can bust through all the knives in one sitting instead of, you know, just back and forth. Yeah, I'll that's... use the whetstone for some of the nicer knives. Like I've got some knives in there, like a higher end version of the Misono that I don't use at work that I like to keep nice and sharp just to have around for like cutting delicate stuff like tomatoes and stuff like that. And that's when you really want to, if you really want to take your time and like, you got a really nice knife, the whetstone is definitely the way to go. But if you're just busting through these, like I've also got a bunch of really cheap kitchen knives that I've collected over the years, like chef's knives that are, you know, like these like $15 knives that yeah. they just need to be sharp for my friends to come over and cut apples onto the <laughs> tile with. So <laughs> You use the I use, bell sander. Yeah, you use the bell sander for those, and uh, yeah, a lot of times too. Like I said, you can just like, I usually just keep the strop on this, so I can anytime I want just like go out there get a nice little polish on there, or put a new tip on there. Yeah, that's and that. that putting a new one. tip is that's pretty impressive. I didn't realize that was something that you could do. Yeah, it's, it's nice. I mean, especially if you're uh, like a working cook and you're going back and forth with your knife roll all the time, like. You know they're gonna get dinged up. I've had a lot of these knives for years. They've been been to my like to my house to Leroy and Lewis. To then we travel to New York City or Chicago or something, and they're gonna get dinged up along the way. And you know, as long as you know how to fix them, they'll last you for a long time. Do you have any recommendations for a knife roll? Like, is there a certain type that you like, or or, or that holds a specific amount of knives, or is it matter of because you don't want the knives to obviously touching each other within the so it has to have a, it's a proper knife roll there's i've seen leather ones i've seen ones that are like made out of like a vinyl almost right yeah the one i use in uh, a lot of my videos that i've had for a while is made by carhartt it's actually a, a tool roll that one's all right it just isn't very long it's about eight inches long so if you have like a longer knife like you can't fit a bread knife in there you can't really fit a honing rod in there but they, I mean, they make all sorts of knives. One tip I would definitely recommend that I should take my own advice on because I don't do is get blade guards. Okay. Like they make these little sleeves made out of plastic that you can just put over your blades. Like you just kind of snap on. Mm -hmm. That way, even if they're banging into each other, they'll stay they'll stay clean. But I have one for my drawer, so I don't reach in and grab my knife. This is one my sister got me for Christmas. This one's really nice. It's made out of some really soft leather, and uh, this is actually all I really need nowadays. Cool. And it holds it just holds five knives, which is all I all I really need nowadays. You know, I'll just have a chef's knife, a boning knife, usually a Santoku in there. I got this one the other day too. This was great for, for cabbage and stuff, and then you know, keep a honing rod in there and just a nice little kit. And this one's great because it's got leather that nice. that covers the blades and the tips and everything like that, and then it just rolls up and you're good to go. Nice. That's cool. That's cool. What a nice gift. Yeah. Was... She knows you. Right. <laughs> yeah. Very thoughtful. Very thoughtful. Well, thank you, Brad, for taking the time. I think I learned a lot. I know people would definitely learn a lot because this is something that even though I, I asked like 150 people this question, I didn't quite understand how you would use all the different tools and, and gosh, this is really, really cool. So I, I, I definitely appreciate you taking the time. Is there any way, anything else you want to do to, oh, you guys also, just so you, just so people know, you guys have a Patreon page. Yeah, yeah, the Leroy and Lowe's Patreon page. We put out a video every week, and it's, I mean, we're always doing crazy shit at Leroy and Lewis, so I love it. we're always putting out new, new specials, so it's, it's kind of just a glimpse into the actual life of our, our business, right? It's not like we're, it's not like my channel where I'm like out, purchasing stuff and making these whole meals like we literally just put up a camera at whatever we're doing so if you're looking to start a food truck or you're in one it's kind of cool just to see how we deal with the logistics of it and of course we share all of our recipes and techniques for how we cook everything so great way to support the business from afar especially during these yeah, trying times yeah no I, it's been helpful and, and i i've been meaning to write a piece just on the, the patreon channel because as Patreon channels go, yours is easily the most unique because there's a lot of information, not only the behind the scenes stuff like you mentioned, but those recipes, that they're so unique. And, and you guys go from the beginning to end to in those recipes and you see how you do it in a, in a commercial setting, not in a, like a test kitchen or something. Right, right. Yeah. It's a real, real glimpse into the life. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's cool. Well, thank you so much 
for taking the time, Brad. I so appreciate it. And if people have <laughs> sharpening questions, could they reach out to you? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm always active in the DM, so uh, anyone needs any knife recommendations, or if anyone actually gets one of these belt sanders, I'd love to see. Uh, I'd love to see some people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they if they share it, that'd be kind of cool. And I'll, we'll put together one of us will put together a compilation of people's uh, skills. That would be really cool. Or 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 I can create a a photo like a, a blog post with just photos of people's uh, Sanders. That would be rad. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Yeah. So please show us right your on, Sanders, right and on. if you and if you customize them, let us know. God, that'd be cool. <laughs>